Hello there. You would not believe what I found in the trash room of this apartment building the other day. I found a jukebox. An original jukebox playing 45 singles. Or, well, that's what it used to do. It's never gonna do that again because it was way too far gone for any sort of restoration attempts. The actual record changer mechanism had been ripped out by the scrappers already, as well as all the wiring. Even the speakers were all torn up, and the case was banged up and beaten up and broken. Really, the only parts that were at least remotely intact were these. We have a selector logic, and we have a credit computer. Both of these modules were made in 1977, and I thought it would be interesting to take these apart, to look inside and see what the brains of a 1977 jukebox look like. Now, the way these modules come apart is quite easy, at least from what I can tell. We have this plastic cover. This is plastic. And we have this metal underside, which is solid, as you can see. Used to be screwed into the jukebox case there and there. But you do have these tabs, and I think what you do is you slide this whole thing over as far as it'll go, a little bit like this, and then should be able to bend these tabs down and slide the whole thing over them, over and out. And that's exactly how it works. Now, the tabs turn out to be surprisingly solid. It really did take a bit of force to bend them down far enough. But then there is this uh, piece of cardboard, and then we have uh, some of this uh, old and brittle foam. This is really bad right here. And uh, this stuff, in some cases, it can turn slightly conductive. So maybe that was one of the faults that the jukebox ended up having, that the logic couldn't work properly anymore due to there uh, being low resistance across the circuit board connections. And here we have the circuit board itself. I was kind of hoping to find some TTL logic on here, but then again, at this given size, um, <laughs> you really can only expect to find an all-in-one chip of some sort, especially if it's called a computer. That's going to require a bit more logic than uh, you could possibly fit onto this board. So there is only this a big AMI branded processor chip made in Korea, so possibly made by Samsung. <laughs> Who knows? Can't find any info on this. I even ripped off that uh, little sticker. You can still see the residue just to check if there may be some sort of a window up on top that would have identified this as an EEPROM. I got some of these uh, dip switches for programming the thing. These are probably going to be kind of handy if I unsolder them. I'll probably have to put quite a bit of contact spray into these because they, uh, they don't look that trustworthy. I got a switch to uh, give you credit <laughs> so that you don't have to insert any coins if you just want to test the unit. These are some NPN Darlington transistors. They're both the same. I got some, uh, these could have also been a failure point, some Sprague brand capacitors, and I have seen some of those go bad. I got some small transistors here. I can't find anything on that uh, model number, S300H. And on the bottom, as I said, the foam may have caused some problems. Look at that. This, uh, this residue right there, this is actually sticky and, uh, you know, it's not going to come off easily. So that could have caused short circuits. Uh, you can see all of these dip switches just ground out ports on this processor. That's all they do. Eh. 
So, that's the first module. I guess there is not a lot of useful stuff on here, unfortunately. Not that exciting. Well, let's uh, move on to the other module. This is a bit larger, so uh, maybe it's also going to be a bit more interesting. This module is in even worse condition. Just look at that foam. That has... First of all, it's all cracked as it is already. I haven't touched it. And then, I don't know if that's mold or some sort of corrosion or, or what this is, but I'll definitely make sure to dispose of that carefully. Uh, it doesn't get any better. So also on this we just have a big chip, all in one chip, H7427A. I guess this down there is the date code, 1977, as we know these modules are from 1977. Once again, I cannot find any data on this. I got a switch. Some more of these uh, NPN Darlington transistors, some more dip switches, and a lot more of these uh, S300H transistors. And I did some more research, and it seems like uh, Ro or Rowe, I don't know how you uh, speak that, but basically the parent company of AMI seems like they had their own part numbers and uh, so these actually cross-reference to some NPN transistor, some standard small signal NPN transistor. So nothing special. Another Sprague capacitor that may have been a problem and yet again the foam certainly would have been some sort of a problem as it's stuck between the pins. But that's it, pretty much. How disappointing. Some special purpose processor chips. Hmm. Oh well, I guess I'm just gonna unsolder these uh, transistors and that'll be it. And those uh, dip switches, definitely. But uh, yeah, so... Uh, in 1977, technology had already progressed far enough to become somewhat unexciting. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this video, and uh, thank you for watching.